All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Gary Guyman, who is in Cincinnati, Ohio, or close to Cincinnati, Ohio. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Gary is from Dominate Partners, uh, and what we're going to talk about today is sales and selling strategies for small businesses. So um, let's get straight into it, Gary. Um, today, I think there are so many tools and, and platforms and all of that available to small businesses to sell that it can become overwhelming, and I think at times it's the strategy piece that's missing, you know, because people think, especially if a small business, they think, oh, they tr sort of take a scattergun approach. Right, right, yeah. I think uh, you're absolutely right. Like the technology becomes um, overwhelming and we, um, we, we we try to become, especially small business owners, we, we, we try to become experts at everything, which is impossible. And I think the, um, the easiest thing to forget is, you know, sales is about uh, communication and touch. So the more times we uh, have our message in front of someone, the more times that we're able to uh, communicate what it is that we do, the more successful that we can be. I think technology helps us with that, but we miss out on just easy things, which, you know, to me, the number one tool for sales period should still be the phone, which the telephone has been, you know, a, a sale mm -hmm. for a long, long time, but we want to make everything sexy. Um, when, you know, um, a phone call, a text message, uh, a message via social media that is pointedly placed and um, isn't um, isn't interruptive in a way that puts people off, can give you a better conversion than almost any other, you know, type of medium. So I, I always talk a lot and help other uh, business owners focus on utilizing that in their sales process and their sales strategy as much as possible. Yeah, no, I like what you just said about the phone because um, it has become somewhat, I mean, some people have said, oh, you know, phone, it's an old, it's it's old, you know, people don't want to be called anymore, you know, they, they what they find their information elsewhere. But especially, as you said, for small businesses, I mean, the important thing is, is number one, obviously identifying your, your, who your real customer is and then figuring out, you know, how do they like to be communicated with? Exactly. Exactly. And you're exactly right about the how. Um, we get caught up in uh, doing one thing. Like uh, I'm going to send them an email or I'm going to send them a text or I'm going to send them a piece of mail or I'm going to send them, you know, or I'm, I'm going to call them. And we think everybody is going to respond that way. And, um, you know, and thinking about the phone itself, you have the ability to almost hit every mode of communication with the phone and at the same time figure out how a customer responds. I mean, if you've called somebody six times and they're not responding, then obviously that's not how they want to be communicated to. Uh, same thing with email, same thing with text. Um, but once you have kind of a... Um, an establishment of that communication method, I think that it's it's critical to be able to number one do it effectively, but do it uh, succinctly. Like we try, you know, I, I watch people send out emails and uh, they're they're trying to cover one point, and the email is kind of like the length of War and Peace. Mm -hmm. um, or we leave a voicemail, and the voicemail goes on for two or three minutes. We're a microwave society, more and more and more. Uh, and basically that means we want, we want instantaneous. We want to know what it is you're talking about immediately. And so just being direct and communicating effectively and quickly will help you, I think, in conversion more often than not. The biggest piece, uh, that's missed in that communication process is we want to tell, 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 and that's not selling. We should be, you know, mm -hmm. We should be listening twice as much as we talk, two ears, one mouth. But we should also be, be able to be looking for the problem to uh, to provide a solution. We focus on features and benefits. You're you're not mm -hmm. solving the problem. You're not relative. And it's the same way with your communication method and mode. If, if you're not communicating in the mode or the method that the customer wants to hear it, it's it's going to become white noise and you're not going to get get the sale. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I like what you just said there about, uh, you know, the, the way society is today, you know, and we're very, everything has to be immediate and direct communication, because I do think that is really critical because here's the thing at the end of the day is most times uh, people know you're a salesperson, uh, even when you're calling, whatever, I mean, they know it's a salesperson. So yeah. being more to the point and direct, I think is more respectful to the person on the other end or the person you're leaving a message for rather than trying to leave some convoluted message that's kind of trying to hide the fact that you're actually trying to sell them something. Absolutely. And people are going to respond to that. We, I had a prospect uh, a couple months ago. We were talking. We have we've went back and forth with email. We, so we scheduled a call after a few uh, conversations via email. We scheduled a call. We had a, had a Zoom call. And um, I took the time to listen to uh, what is – what his problems were, what he what he needed help with. And quite honestly, like the things that we could bring to the table, he, he pretty much had that covered. And um, in listening to him and, and allowing him to give his uh, reasons, I guess, why we were having that call, um, that was just straightforward and kind of gave him my feedback and gave him a couple of different uh, ways to go. Not one of them was me pitching us because we really didn't fit what it was that he really mm -hmm. needed. He thought he needed something, but really he needed, you know, something else. And uh, I explained that to him. And the next day he called me at my office and he wanted to hire us to to do the thing that we do do because he wanted somebody like that on his team that listened to him and and can provide consultation. Um, we we get so caught up, especially salespeople in general, get caught up in needing to make that sale and mm -hmm. you know not only does the desperation begin to shine through but you lose that uh consulting type approach where you're trying to help them solve a problem and it just feels like you're shoving things you know down their throat to take that maybe they don't need and if we can take a step back and we can listen and we can hear what it is that they need and then provide solutions and maybe it's not your solution uh, but provide solutions that make sense. Like people are going to respect that and it's going to come back in a way to you that, you know, may maybe you're not this stone cold closer that closes mm -hmm. every sales call, but you develop relationships and those relationships will give back to you. If you are thinking about giving first and not trying to take, uh, you'll get much more out of any relationship, including sales. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I think one of the things that we've seen, um, certainly I think uh, it was happening pre-pandemic, but it's certainly the pandemic, I think, has accelerated it. And that's where people sort of crave more uh, human communication or that authenticity word, which people throw around. I love the whole idea of like uh, being more authentic because, you know, you either are or you aren't. Um, and and the so I think that whole I think people want to be want to be acknowledged and listened to, just like you said, they want to be acknowledged and listened to. I think for too long, we uh, instead of using technology as the enabler, it is we kind of used it as a crutch or a, or, or a wall to hide behind. And I think people just want to be acknowledged and they want to be listened to. Yeah. Um, so I always equate selling to dating. Um, my wife usually cringes when she hears me speak about that, but <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was going to be clear, like you're looking at my face, like I'm I'm not going to really grab a lot of people on a Tinder or whatever the, the dating <laughs> app websites are. Right. Uh, it's about listening and communicating. And unfortunately, we have as a society uh, gotten away from that in every in, in every mode. And selling is one of those things. Um, you have to look at it from the standpoint of, you know, Dating is a process to, you know, get them to know you, to get them to like you, to get them to trust you. And if you do the same thing in your sales process and you understand you can't go from no to trust like that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can't meet a girl at a bar and ask her to marry you before the first drink comes. Um, it's the same thing in sales. They, there has to be a level of understanding and trust. And you talked about uh, being authentic, which I, I agree with you. I think, I think it's hilarious. Like you either, you either are truthful or you're not, there isn't, you don't go from, Oh, I used to be dishonest and now I'm authentic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it goes back to that them getting to know who you are. Look, uh, in the vein of small business and, um, 
I, I believe this through and through and through, as much as we try to be bigger than we are, customers want to do business with people. Like they want yeah. to connect with people. I think about the restaurants that I enjoy locally. It's because I like the people, the waiter, the bartender, the owner, um, other local services that I utilize is because I, I know somebody, the owner, the employee, those connections keep me coming back. And I would never have those connections if there wasn't a time when I got to know them, got to like them and got to trust them. And we have to be able to do those things in our messaging multiple places, multiple ways. Um, but we also have to understand that's definitely a part of the sales process and bringing uh, bringing someone to your company to buy your product or service. Yeah, no, and I agree. And I think small businesses have a great opportunity now because, again, I think it's back to that whole idea of people wanting to work with people. They want to um, have relationships with people. We've even seen, I mean, in, in the medical field, for instance, right, um, you can see they're starting, people are starting to move away from those big group medical groups, you know, where you go and, you know, your doctor is one of seven doctors in that practice and all of this. And and um, people are kind of starting to move away from that because eventually that becomes very kind of impersonal and bureaucratic and now particularly if they're doing a lot of uh doing a lot of virtual uh, consultations people just don't feel the same connection anymore yeah and you bring it and so that leads to a second part of building that connection so the reason why there are you know those larger medical practices the managed care if you will is it you know it's supposed to bring costs down it's supposed to be a mm -hmm. cheaper option and more and more people are foregoing um paying less for having a better relationship my wife and i actually are just on the end of this to where you know we were part of larger practices like it, it was throwing a dart against the wall like who am i going to see today uh, yeah. oh it's you i've never met you before great yeah here's my medical problem can you please help me um to where like we've sought out specific medical professionals that we want to continue to have a relationship with that's invested in our care so the value proposition comes into that knowing, liking, and trusting as well. Like if you're looking to make more money, put it into a spin of I'm going to build relationships that give value so people see me as valuable. No, absolutely. I, I totally agree. And I think the the other part, I mean, we, we uh, touched on it at the beginning, but I think the other part too is – um, using the technology, like using social media and all of that, but using it effectively rather than sometimes I feel like, you know, especially small businesses, they say, oh, well, you know, I need to be on Facebook. Okay, fine. No, I need to be on Twitter as well. No, I need to be on Instagram. Oh, now I need to be on TikTok or whatever. And instead of, uh, I always feel like it's, it's, it's just like, oh, I need to be because everybody else is as opposed to this doesn't really work for me or work for right. my customers. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I uh, I struggle with TikTok. You know, I'm I'm gonna be 50 yeah. in October. It's like it's like it's uh it's neat, it's cool, um, but I don't get it. Number one, and I don't, mm -hmm. and my audience really isn't on there. So you're absolutely yep. right. And I think it's uh, it's one of those things that you know you're you're trying to build depth, and uh, the more depth that you can build with the value that you bring to social media is important, and getting getting people to know who you are and what, what you're about, what your business is about should be what social media should be about more than just trying to be everywhere. Uh, that's, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, just that's similar to a slingshot approach or throw everything against the wall and see what's going to stick to where if you focus on where your perfect customer lives in terms of social media and you focus your content on that and uh, you hit the marks with your content, you know, it's it's engaging. You have some stuff that's educational. They have some stuff that's entertaining. Then people are going to interact with the content, uh, content and engage with the content more than you know you building followers. If we're focused on having as many followers as possible, you're missing the whole point of what social media should be about. Where you should be focused on having as much engagement as possible. I'd rather have two thousand people that engage with me on a monthly basis than a hundred thousand people that don't ever view my content. Um, mm -hmm. So if you focus on 
putting out consistent content that, you know, hits one of those educational, entertaining and uh, engaging marks, then you're going to, to get people to interact. And I think the one step beyond that is, you know, as business owners, we try to um, we try to not be as personal as possible. And it goes back to what I was saying. People want to do business with people. You have to interject some personality and personal mm-hmm. things into the social media just as much as business. Otherwise, it's dry or always selling and people aren't going to aren't going to watch that. The best the best social media is when it touches somebody's heart, touches somebody's brain or makes makes someone want to create action because of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think uh, the other part, too, is to figure out what the personality of your business is, too, right? Because I've seen this, I've seen this occasionally where a business probably outsources social media, probably finds somebody to do it. And suddenly, like the social media is very different, you know, it's kind of at odds with the business. And it's kind of not what you're expecting or not even what you want from that, you know, because sometimes everybody thinks, oh, well, I need to be entertaining and all of that. But sometimes, no, you want you want serious and you want education and you want to know that these people like know what they're about. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, brand brand voice is so difficult for an agency to replicate for a company. Um, it, it, you know, to me, it's almost impossible because how can a third party replicate what what your voice or what your uh, what what your brand positioning actually is? And um, you know, my uh, my comment or my uh, suggestion with social media is to always try to maintain control of your social media and not give it to a third party because, just like you said, it's either not going to match mm-hmm. or it's going to be totally different. Than, than what it is that, uh, the, that what it is you want to accomplish and you want to do. And there's nothing there, there's nothing worse than somebody thinking your um, your brand voice or your brand positioning is totally different than what it is. Like if you're trying to be um, you know a, a direct type company that you know you, you you display things like they're supposed to be and things are delivered the way they're supposed to be and, and you have somebody that's going third party and they're trying to be funny all the time and, you know, trying to make it look jovial. And that's not who, who your company Mm -hmm. is, what your company is. You're going to lose engagement. You're going to lose, you're going to lose followers and, uh, you know, inevitably you're going to lose uh, potential revenue. So as much as we always want to delegate and, uh, and give things away, I think, you know, social media is one of those things, especially with your company that needs to be done by the people inside of your company. Um, Because going back to the same thing I've said, people want to do business with people. And um, having a third party run social media for you is, in in my opinion, it'll be people that disagree, but in my opinion, isn't, uh, we'll we'll use the word that we've been throwing around, it isn't authentic, let's Mm -hmm. be honest. Uh, And that defeats the purpose. Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. And I think that's, uh, and I think that's a trap a lot of people are, are, are kind of falling into today. Um, so in the in the last couple of minutes we have here, uh, Gary, what would be one other piece of advice that you would give to small businesses? Well, um, so don't, um, don't, don't give up on your customer database, you should constantly be communicating with your previous customers and your customer database about your company, uh, new happenings, keeping them updated with anything and everything that's going on uh, as a means of a touch. The, if, if you have a business where customers can utilize you in the future, you don't want them to go looking for the things you provide from your competitors. You've already, um, you've already secured their relationship. You've already had that relationship. So continue communicating with them in a way that reminds them of you, of what you can do, and uh, and what it is that uh, uh, what what value that you bring to them. To me, that's that is number one critical piece to growing and scaling your business is maintaining customer communication. And then the other thing that I would recommend to uh, to locally based uh, home home service or small businesses in general is be active in your community but do it as a giver. It doesn't mean you have to be charitable or anything like that. It means that you are showing your 
your company, your brand is invested and involved in the community. Um, sponsoring a local kids sports function would be um, kind of a, a one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Another way yeah. would be to you know be involved if there's a local fair or a festival, putting your name on it. Uh, you know, spending a couple hundred bucks here and there to make your name be involved with the community goes a long way, and people wanting to uh, to give back to you and to make sure that you stay in that community. And um, focusing on those two things, previous customers and um, community involvement can can help you in ways that um, aren't able to be uh, always looked at from an ROI perspective, but yeah, it yeah. is looked at in a way of goodwill and value. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you, Gary. I think uh, I think that's a really important part. You know, if you're going to be in the community, being part of the community. Um, listen, uh, all of Gary's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell us more about you and your company. Yes, sir. Um, so Dominate Partners works with um, service-based businesses in terms of developing marketing and sales strategies to grow revenue, uh, to take. Uh, new services to market and, uh, and, and to dominate your market. That's, that's the names namesake. And, um, you know, we work across the country primarily in the home service space, but also professional services. We look for ways to help you automate, delegate, or innovate sales and marketing strategies, um, to grow and, uh, and to get to where you want to go. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks again, Gary, like fascinating insights. Thank you for watching and listening and I'll see you all again soon.